Hello everyone, today we can see learning Python and today we will create a Telegram bot that works as a timer. So let's start. If you haven't seen my last video about Telegram bots, about how all of these bots work together, how to use different libraries like Telebot, Iogram, then you should watch it. Because I will not explain basic stuff like how to create a bot in Telegram, how to do other things because it's really easy and I don't want to spend time right here. So what we'll do today? Today we'll create a bot that will act as a timer. For example, I'll write 10 to the bot and that bot will send a message. For example, your timer is at, and then it will go like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 in one message. So we'll not send a lot of messages at once. We'll only edit one message. And once our timer reaches zero, we'll send like your timer is uh, finished or your timer is completed or your time has finished, something like that. So how to do that? With Iogram. Iogram, again, it's an asynchronous library. I have a video on it and you should also watch it. But it's not as, it's not a complicated library. So I think everybody will understand what I'm doing right here. So from Iogram, let's import bot executor. Uh, let's import dispatcher first and then executor. Executor. So bot, it's our main Telegram bot that will uh, send our messages. So it's just like our bot. And what we need to provide here, we need to, of course, provide the token of our bot. I'll get my token from the bot father and I'll just paste it as a string right here. But of course, if you've seen my video about environ, about environment variables, then you know that you should put your tokens, your password, every kind of useful information that you can tweak and change in the future to the environment variables. And I will not do that today, but you should always do that if you are working on your real projects. And even if you don't work on your real projects, because it's like kind of um, uh, an advantage for every time you write a code. Okay, so now we have a bot. And in order to listen to the messages that come to us, we cannot use our bot, but we can use our dispatcher. So let's create bot dispatcher. Again, bot dispatcher uh, like listens to the messages that we, and we need to provide the bot that we just created, listens to the messages that our users, our other bots, channels, so it just listens to the incoming data from the Telegram. That's how it works. And let's create our bot dispatcher message handler. Um, message handler will handle a simple message from the user, from another bot, and what we need to do here, define, um, set new timer set new timer it's uh, it will accept a message as every uh, message handler in telegram in iogram in telebot should do so message it's the message from our user and um, set new i don't like new timer message i don't like the name of the function so i'll change it to new timer message okay so again we created a bot that will send um, edit and do all kinds of things with the messages that we want to, that our bot, want, bot wants to send, wants to see and so on. But in order to listen to the incoming messages, we'll use bot dispatcher, which accepts our bot object inside of it. And that's how it works. So we created a message handler right here. It will handle all of the incoming data. You can write different filters, different things inside of the parentheses, but I'll just stick with the normal message handler. And we also accept the message from our user. So now it's printed to see that everything works. And after that, I'll use main if name equals equals main executor start polling. And what I need to do right here is provide dispatcher as bot dispatcher. By the way, I want to say that if you want to use your Telegram bot in production, then you should use start webhook. So you should not use it, but you should like kind of set a webhook. Many people say that uh, start webhook, set webhook in Telegram libraries should never be used because of some bugs, but I have never seen a problem with that. So if you have no idea about webhooks, you can read about them in the Telegram API or anywhere on the internet, they are like really simple. But I'll make a video on how to publish your Telegram bots to the production later. Now let's just focus on our main objective, which is writing a timer, a bot timer uh, with Iogram. So I will just use start polling because it's a debug version and I don't want to use like some kind of webhooks and so on because I need a URL and 
I don't want to do that. And now what we can do, we can write hello to our bot and we will see non-type cannot be used in await expression, yes, because we use asynchronous new timer message. So message handler should be an asynchronous function. Let's write hello again. And as you can see, now we see our message. So that is the message that is coming from our user. That's great. And what we want to do right here, if, uh, first of all, how our bot will work again, we will write a message like 10, we will send it. And after that, our bot will count from 10 to zero. And after that, it will say like your timer has finished. In order to do that, we need, um, we need a variable that will contain the amount of seconds for the user. In our case, it will be seconds, um, timer, timer seconds. Yeah, timer seconds like that. So how to do that? Let's first of all try pass, put accept value error and type error right here. I'll explain why I need those. And then let's pass um, and they accept. So users can write any kind of information that they want. And if I want to use timer seconds, seconds variable right here, and I'll use integer from message.txt. If I want to use integer from message.txt, I will receive an error if my user will send hello or some kind of like 10.2 or anything that is not an integer. Because of that, I need to use accept. And if we have an error, what we can do is we can use await bot send message to the chat ID, which is chat ID, which is message.chat.id. Again, if you don't understand what I'm doing right now, what all the, those functions mean, again, send message, I think it's really obvious, but you should also watch the previous videos that I had on Telegram bots. Okay, so now we are sending a message to the uh, bot, to the user that wrote, uh, th that wrote the message to our bot, and we should say, write a valid integer. Okay, now let's run it, and let's see, what if I write 10? 10 is a valid integer, everything is okay, but if I write something like that, write a valid integer. So that's how it works. That's great. By the way, if I write 10.0, write a valid integer also. Mm, yeah, I think that's, yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, it's a string, it's not a float, okay. So what I want to do right now, right now I want to make a timer, but how we can do that? And again, our timer should work from, uh, it should work with one message only. So we cannot send like multiple messages with different, um, with different amount of seconds in them. We should only send one message and then edit it. And in order to edit messages, what we can do is we can see what is the result of, what is the result of, let me comment that, what is the result of bot sent message. So what if I put print or I'll wrap my bot sent message in a print. Let's run it now. Let's run some hello message. And as you can see, we print. But if we look, uh, we print a normal message uh, from Iogram, but if we look at from, what do we see? Is bot true? First name, test scrapper bot, username, test scrapper bot. If you see, test scrapper bot right here. So when we use bot sent message in Iogram, in Telebot, in every um, Telegram related library, uh, almost any Telegram related library, we receive a new message as a result of our send message function. So a new message is received right here. That means that we can use it to, we can use the result of bot send message function to edit our last message. For example, I'll write, um, write a valid integer uh, at first, but then I'll edit, use edit text function. So as you can see, there are a lot of edit, edit caption, edit live location, media, reply more capsule. There are lots of things, but I'll edit the text. And yes, yeah, you can see there are lots of things in here either, but I'll use text as new, message text and let's use await and then because uh, at the start because it's um, a coroutine also so now when i write hello i receive new message so you can you could have seen like uh, look at the message right now so as you can see it's it's like changing what i can do is write like multiply by 1000 or 10 just 10 then hello, you will see that like the mm, the area that text box is using is like shrinking. Yeah, you you sh you definitely saw that. So we edit our message right now, and 
That's just great. So that's how we can edit our messages in Iogram. And what I want to do right now, right now I want to first of all uncomment that code because it will be useful for us. And then await bot send message, message chat ID. I will send your timer is at and let's provide um, F string so with timer seconds at the end. So your timer is at, for example, 10 seconds. After that, what do I need to do? I need to use four seconds left in range pass. So four seconds left. Now we need to create a loop that will iterate through the through every second. So 10, 9, 8, 7, like that. And we'll um, edit the message with the proper amount of seconds left for that specific user. What do we need to do right now? Timer seconds. So from timer seconds minus one to minus one, minus one. What does that mean? Um, from timer seconds minus one. So for example, our user sent 10. New message, which is the first message, message that we sent to our user is your timer as is at timer seconds. So is at 10 seconds, for example. And then the next thing that we need to do is change that num number to nine because one second passed. Four seconds left in not timer seconds because we have already sent, uh, said that your timer is at 10 seconds. We need to go down on our counter and use timer seconds minus one. That's how it works. After that, I'll use await new message dot edit text with uh, text as your timer is at and uh, instead of timer seconds we'll put seconds left and of course the next part of the range is like minus one so when we where we start where do we start at um, timer seconds minus one so at nine for example we end at zero because that the second number is not included and we use minus one so we our step is minus one so we are moving from ten to zero so ten nine and so on and then we edit our text and let's just check how that works. Let's run it. For example, I'll write 10. Yeah, as you can see, so let's, let me write like 10,000. As you can see, that is great. Our counter is going down. Uh, and as you can see, there are moments when our counter stops, but that's just because Telegram wants, uh, Telegram does not want us to make a lot of API calls. I will talk about that a little bit later, but now we need our timer to work for every second. And because of that, we need to put um, a function that will stop our timer for one second exactly. And that function is async your sleep. So I think a lot of you know about it if you have seen my videos about async IO. So async IO sleep literally sleeps for one second. Now, if I run my function, for example, 10, you can see timer at 10, 9, 8, 7, six so now we have our timer and um, we do not send a lot of messages again we just edit that specific message zero and our timer stops that's great what do i want to do next is of course just send a new message let me copy that like that your timer has finished let's run it again and let's for example put three 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 two one and your timer has finished that's how it works so that's the simplest application that we can write with um iogram so it's not the simple the the most simple one but it's it's amusing it's great so yeah that's it and what do i want to say first of all if you want to copy that code please make a separate settings.py file and move your token to a um dot end dot end file so to environment variables if you haven't seen my video about environment variables then please watch it the second thing that i want to say is that you should never put that bot in in production why because um telegram has a specific limit of api calls per per minute i think per second i don't know a specific limit for api calls for a specific period of time and in our case, we make can, uh, we make um, monotonic API calls every second. So every second we use edit text, which is an API call, and we every second we edit, 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 edit some text. So we make API calls. 
The problem is that if we have five users, 10 users, 100 users that use your bot, Telegram will not like that because you make 100 um, queries a second, um, 100 queries every second. And imagine if some users will put like that big number. Python can support it. It can support it. Let's let's see. And yeah, so as you can see, Python can support it because Python has uh, long geometry, long algebra. So py in py Python can extend its uh, memory for our use. I said that in the previous video about Redis. If, for example, our integer is too big for I don't know, two megabytes, Python will give it four, like that. I don't know how it's called in English, but it's like long geometry in or long algebra, extended algebra. I don't know how it how it's called in English. Okay, but Python will extend the amount of memory required for the variable for the array if uh, our array is big or uh, small. So it will it will shrink or extend its memory when needed, and that's why users can put any numbers that they want and that can literally make infinite api calls for every minute what's better if you ask me is to create um, a timer for every minute so i think your sleep 60 will work perfectly because you will not make as many calls as you do with sync your sleep one and you still have a timer but for testing purposes you can put one right here that's how it works so that was a simple Telegram bot that worked as a timer. Thank you for the watching and good luck.